Hello everyone. Uh, this time around, I want to talk a little bit about Canada's new alert ready emergency alert system that goes via the cellular network. Now that's, uh, it's actually a pretty good idea. Uh, it's something that's been, well, lacking for quite a long time, especially since the LTE specifications and so on have had a broadcast channel in there for just this sort of purpose well, forever pretty much. So it makes you wonder why they haven't been using it at all for the past however many uh, years, I guess, possibly upwards of a decade. I think the reason for that is uh, probably the complexity of getting the alerts and so on into the system from the relevant authorities and making it play with a an emergency alert system that was almost certainly uh, created back in the, uh, what, 40s or 50s or something like that, and was based around old analog technologies and so on, and which probably hasn't been substantially updated since then, except to keep it limping along and sort of working. And that that may be the whole reason why it's taken so long. And that might also be one of the reasons why the Canadian Alert Ready system is uh, somewhat different than previously deployed systems elsewhere. I don't know how much difference it is actually under the hood, but I do know that uh, they have somehow managed to avoid supporting phones that should have the technology to receive these broadcasts and be able to display them. And I think that's probably on the uh, heads of the mobile providers and and uh, the not, not even so much the phone makers, because I'd be uh, pretty much uh, certain that Samsung, for instance, has had the underlying technology in the physical hardware of their phones for quite a while. So my Note 5, for instance, should be able to physically receive these broadcasts. But it's not supported, apparently. Uh, so I don't get the... I didn't get the test alert that was sent out the, the other week. Uh, and they do that periodically just to make sure the system's working. And they always have, so that's, that's fine. But I didn't get it because... Uh, at least according to my carrier, my phone uh, doesn't support it. Apparently there has to be, at the very least, some sort of a firmware update to support it. And this uh, actually uh, uh, brings to the, the fore the fact that having a customized uh, firmware image for each um, wireless carrier for each device is clearly stupid in the light of things like this. I've always thought it was stupid, but of course they do that so they can uh, put in their shovelware crap into the uh, into into the images so that uh, all of their junk is on there and uninstallable, uh, not uninstallable. Anyway. Uh, this whole alert system, alert ready, uh, it's it's actually a good idea, and I certainly don't have any complaints about the idea of deploying it. That's definitely a good idea. But a couple of the uh, things that have happened in the past few weeks have highlighted a couple of problems with the system. First, they had some failures in the actual deployment of it, uh, so the the first test they did in uh, Ontario and Quebec, I believe it was, uh, had some communication trouble on their side, actually getting the alert out to the carriers, I believe, like actually getting it into the uh, system, the broadcast system itself. Now that's obviously the point of these types of tests, is to find problems like that and so, so they can fix them. So, you know, that's good. It was a test alert that failed. So they went and they investigated and they have apparently fixed it. And then they did uh, a week later or so a test everywhere else and near as I can tell a large number of people didn't receive the test message even on uh, devices that supposedly were supported. I don't know the details on that. My device isn't supported so I have no idea. Uh, 
it should be supported, but you know, they they didn't support it. Maybe there will be an update at some point in the future that supports it, but I'm certainly not buying a new phone just to have alert ready. Anyway, apparently they've got most of the kinks worked out and it will improve over time as they have more experience operating it and the uh, wireless uh, providers fix any implementation problems and all of that jazz. Uh, so the actual underlying functionality, apparently they've got it mostly working, and I'm, I'm sure that will uh, that will definitely improve anything that doesn't work properly. Will definitely improve as more alerts go out and everybody has more operational experience with it. But there was an incident in Ontario. Uh, there. I believe it was the authorities in Thunder Bay issued an Amber Alert uh, for a missing child. Now, Amber Alerts are generally a good idea uh, as long as they're not overused. And I don't necessarily think that this particular case, an Amber Alert, was not warranted. I don't know the details, and it may well have been a good idea. It probably was. You don't hear about these Amber Alerts continually, so they obviously don't use them every time uh, a child appears to be uh, uh, missing. They do some sort of uh, legwork first. Uh, so it's not their first go-to, but uh, you know it, it's a balancing act. Do you send the Amber Alert or not? And if you don't, and it could have saved the kid, you know, it, it, it's a tough balancing act. So. I can understand a little bit erring on the side of sending an alert when you don't really need to. And so it's not the fact that they issued an Amber Alert that, uh, that that's problematic uh, in this case. Now, of course, with an Amber Alert, you get a notice when the alert goes out, you get notices with updates to it, and you get a notice when it's cancelled. So. Presumably, you're going to get at least two notices when an Amber Alert is underway. First, when it starts, and second, when it's done. Uh, so that means you're going to get two messages that if your phone is on and set so that you can actually hear it, uh, you know, it's not muted or something, uh, you're going to get uh, basically uh, two obnoxious alerts which are going to be distracting and annoying. Now if you're in the immediate geographic area where the uh, Amber Alert is relevant, that's maybe okay. The problem is they sent this alert to the entire province of Ontario. Now Ontario is huge. And to get from Thunder Bay to Toronto, for instance, you're looking at something like 14 hours by car, right? And it's not not much, well, it's faster by air, but presumably once you've issued the Amber Alert, the uh, transportation, relevant transportation authorities will be on the lookout. So you don't need, you don't necessarily need a scattershot geographic coverage. So... We have the uh, situation uh, where the Amber Alert was sent out, rightfully, almost certainly, but to too large of a geographic area. Even in Alberta, uh, you know, covering Edmonton or even Red Deer for an Amber Alert in Calgary would be excessive in most cases, unless you have reason to suspect that people in another geographic area like Red Deer or Edmonton uh, would be able to help for a disappearance in Calgary if you have if you have a reason to believe that the missing child is in the other city. Now I don't know if the reason that this alert blanketed the entire province of Ontario was because uh, the authorities issuing the alert didn't think and just said, okay, we'll just issue a, an alert for the entire. Uh, province, you know, because, you know, that's what we do. Uh, or if it was a case of uh, the underlying system doesn't allow more precisely targeted geographic areas. Now, I would be shocked if it doesn't. It should at least be able to target municipalities because you certainly wouldn't want to be sending severe weather alerts for Thunder Bay 
uh, you know, a tornado warning, for instance, uh, you wouldn't want to be sending that to people in Toronto. Uh, that would be uh, totally pointless because a tornado in Thunder Bay will never, ever hit Toronto. It's too far away. Uh, and if it is, then everybody knows there's something bigger going on. Uh you know, so that's the type of thing. So they have to be able to target it geographically much at a much smaller scale than an entire province. So I'm thinking that this was a failure on the part of the authorities that issued the alert or a failure on the part of the people operating the uh, broadcast system. Uh, and, and, you know, and even a munici municipal level can be too broad of an area. Uh, for instance, if you have a county or something that covers a rather large area and you've got a tornado uh, warning, say, for a, a town that's in, say, the south, southwest corner uh, and you got another town in the northeast corner that's maybe 150 miles away, potentially, uh, if if you've you know if you've got that kind of a distance there, well maybe that severe thunderstorm warning or that tornado warning or something like that is actually not relevant to that other town on the other corner of the municipality. So so even targeting uh, at the county level is possibly too wide of a net, but definitely targeting at the province level for something that's relatively localized is excessive. So what is the, the problem with this? Like you might think, well, we should err on the side of sending alerts uh, when we shouldn't rather than not sending them then we should. And, and there's an argument to be had for that. But the, the problem here is if you send too many irrelevant alerts to people, they will just uh, say, okay, well, this is inconvenient. They'll look at it, close it, ignore it, and go on with their day. Even if it's obnoxiously annoying when it happens, it's just, okay, it's one more obnoxious annoyance I have to deal with. They'll, they'll cancel it and go on their, with their, their day. And they will get trained to do that. They'll, it'll become a habit. And then when the alert really is relevant to them, they won't even read it. So this is what you need to avoid. You need to avoid the crying wolf situation. So that means that we really need to collapse down the target areas for these alerts to actually relevant areas. So in the instance of an, an Amber Alert in Thunder Bay, uh, the, unless you have reason to believe that the missing child has shown up in Toronto or is likely to be there, you don't target Toronto. Uh, and if you say, well, we just want to make sure we covered uh, the likely destinations. Well, they didn't send the alert to anywhere in Manitoba. And just about everywhere in Manitoba is easier to get to, faster to get to from Thunder Bay than southern Ontario. If, they, if that was their reason for targeting Toronto, they should have also targeted Winnipeg and Brandon. Uh, you know the major centers in Manitoba, but they didn't. And that basically says that this whole targeting all of Ontario thing was probably just a default setting and nobody thought it was a bad, that, that they needed to change something or there wasn't a way for them to target Thunder Bay and neighboring municipalities, right? Which would have made sense, you know, target Thunder Bay and the immediate neighbors, you know, based on how long the uh, child's been missing it gives you some idea how far they could end up getting uh, so you know that that's that's the the big thing there now there's another thing here as well uh, quite frankly an amber alert should not come with the obnoxious uh, tones and all of that of a of a priority one uh, Im imminent danger to life and limb type alert uh, Yes, it's, an, it's important, right? Definitely important. And maybe if you're immediately where the, an abduction has taken place, you might want that, that priority alert to go out there. But in the, the further away you get from the incident, the less relevant it actually is. And 
that's objective relevance. Uh, quite frankly, I don't care if a child has gone missing in Thunder Bay. I'm 2,000 plus kilometers away. It does not affect me at all, unless it's somebody, in, some member of my family, right? In which case, I will be notified of it through other means. So, so that's the thing. Uh, I think we need more than just two levels of alerting. Uh, the current levels are there's an alert or there isn't one, right? Uh, I think what we need is at least a, th a third, like a, like a middle level where there's an import important information, but it's not urgent as in uh, life and limb is at risk. So a tornado warning, yes, that should be an, a, a full tier one sky is falling type alert or an incoming missile from uh from north korea or uh it, you know a major earthquake or something or some something where you, you know like you need a major evacuation because there's a flash flood coming whatever those things definitely they should have the obnoxious tone and and definitely uh interrupt everything on the other hand, a, a simple weather weather watch, or even uh, thunderstorm warnings, or uh, you know, even an amber alert in a neighboring town, or maybe amber alerts in general, uh, maybe they uh, they show up as a regular notification instead of the an obnoxious emergency notification, uh, and those ones have it set so they can be silenced independently of the uh, priority ones so that uh, instead of having to turn your phone off or mute it or whatever uh, the criteria is being used by alert ready have it set up so that uh, the you have two levels priority critical and important say and the important ones can be relegated to a less obnoxious notification, standard notification setting on your phone or something like that, or where you can set the notification scheme. Uh, whereas the priority one gets that default uh, emergency alert tone and all of that. So that would be, I think, think smart. Is then the alert system could be used for amber alerts and even cover a slightly larger geographic area than might ordinarily be appropriate without falling into the trap of having people get inured to the alerts and just start ignoring them you know that that i think is an important thing and i don't think the uh, operators of the alert system have actually considered this or if they have, they probably just poo-pooed it because, you know, that's not how things are done, right? But realistically, uh, we need to have multiple levels of alert there. Uh, because some of them just are not that urgent. Uh, and sad as, as it is to say, an amber alert is not in the same urgency class as a tornado or a flash flood. It's not. No matter where you are, no matter which kid it is, it is not in the same urgency class. Uh, that's not a politically correct thing to say, but think about it objectively. You are disrupting the lives of everybody in a geographic area. Everybody. And quite frankly, a missing child, sure, tragic and definitely needs to be solved, but that missing child does not impact the vast majority of the people in even the local area. And odds are, the vast majority aren't going to be able to do anything to help anyway. Sure, getting the word out, great, maybe somebody will see something. But that doesn't mean that you have to be obnoxious about it. You don't have to be. Don't 
don't abuse the there's imminent danger alerting system uh, and that's imminent danger to everybody in an area for something that impacts a relatively small number of people uh, in the case of a missing child obviously that's the child and the family and and friends right but it's definitely not everybody in that area so anyway uh, I think this alert ready thing great uh, I think it's problematic that they haven't forced at least some level of support in for older devices, even if it's an app you can put on the phone that grabs the information off of an internet feed or something like that. That would even be an improvement. Uh, so, yeah, there's that. Uh, it's kind of unfortunate they haven't done something like that and that they haven't mandated the support in for older devices. Uh, at least where physically possible. But I can understand that, and no doubt it's mandated for all new devices going forward, so I would suspect that the carriers have prioritized their effort providing the support for stuff that they still sell, as opposed to stuff that's sold and they're just it's just in the support phase. And of course, older devices that don't support it will gradually phase out over time anyway, so over the next few years, that's a self-solving problem. Uh, so there's that. There's there's a problem with targeting the messages properly, which I'm sure will eventually get figured out. Uh, uh, you know, because people are going to complain loudly when they get messages that are totally irrelevant to them. So that will get solved eventually. But the real thing I think they need to really look at, which requires some effort on their part, is in fact the the fact that there isn't uh, a an important but not completely uh, you, you have to be aware of it yesterday type priority. That is the key thing. There needs to be a second message priority, which can be optionally disabled or silenced without disabling or silencing the high high priority you're gonna die type messages anyway uh, that's really all I have to say about it uh, and I do commend the authorities for actually finally getting with the program and doing something like this but it's not perfect yet and I hope that they are continuing to evaluate the system as it operates and listening to feedback and looking at improvements that they can add to the system uh, as it evolves over the, the next years or decades. Anyway, uh, that's all, all for, for this time. I'll just mention uh, briefly, if you want to support my channel, you can, you can kick some uh, cash my way on Patreon at patreon.com slash lostwizard. If you don't feel like you you can or want to do that that's fine too but it's there as an option and of course uh, like comment subscribe whatever uh, or not as you see fit and if if you've listened this far hey thanks for listening <laughs>